Hi there, fellow travelers. Welcome back to Bon Voyage Cruise Travel, your go-to channel for all things cruise related. Today, we are taking a deep dive into the heart of a cruising experience, the dining adventure aboard the Royal Caribbean Explorer of the Seas. Now, when you think of cruise dining, you probably think of luxurious settings, lots of variety on the menu, and a serene atmosphere. And while that's usually the case, my experience this time was a little more adventurous due to an unexpected situation. Well, the lengthy line for the dining room change was, uh, it took a bit of time, maybe about 45 minutes, and we requested a table for two, but there's no guarantees. They have about 25 people on a list, and I'll know tomorrow by noon under with a with a note under my door. So we'll see how that goes. But tonight we're going to the steakhouse anyway, so it doesn't matter. Today we are on my time dining because I have a fiasco with my table for two at eight o'clock. But they've been so nice about letting us take cancellations, and somebody, um, I guess they had a Windows uh, seat, and they're canceled for tonight. They're doing something else. What a life for lucky. This is my view out the window. It's very nice. Thank you. You see, there were over 300 back to back cruisers on this voyage which made securing my preferred early seating at a table for two a bit of a challenge. My initial assignment was at an eight person table for an 8.30 p.m. dinner. That wasn't the leisurely experience that I had in mind. With some persistence, I managed to negotiate with the dining room hosts and secure an earlier seating at a table for two, although I did end up filling in for guests who were exploring other dining options or skipping dinner entirely. The results, an array of great tables served by an excellent team of wait staff in a relaxed and enjoyable setting and doing what I wanted to do. That looks pretty. So here's the dining room from a different perspective. We are at a table for two over in this section today. Yeah. And here's another interesting observation. The dress code was a bit more relaxed than I had anticipated. I had just returned from a shore excursion in this particular clip and I didn't have time to change for dinner from the bus to the dining room. It was time to eat. But as you can see, everyone is quite casual. And while I, I typically like to change into something more formal for dinner or just a little bit more dressier, it was quite refreshing to see that a more laid back attire was perfectly acceptable. Our tour gets back at 5.20 and our dinner started at 5.15, so we ran over here because we're technically my time dining and we kind of just fill in for the people that don't show for their meals. And I didn't want to have to wait till nine o'clock or eight o'clock or whatever it is. So luckily we um, were able to get in here, but I mean, it's, I, I can say the dress code has, has gotten really more casual because I'm actually wearing what I would wear on my shore excursion. I mean, I look okay, but I normally would have dressed up a bit more. I just have to get used to this new dress situation because it seems like people are dressing less uh, intentional these days, but maybe that's just my my perspective or maybe I'm this old school or something but yeah you have to really be careful on your time I would suggest writing it down in your on your notes in your phone and really making sure you're on the right time with the person that's saying go shop for 90 minutes because we had two people that were left behind they showed up 30 minutes late apparently we found out and we couldn't wait because we had to get back for dinner when we were running late as it was because of traffic. So lesson learned for them, but that would be an expensive taxi ride. It's over two hours. So yeah, be careful when you take tours that let you out and make sure you understand where you're supposed to meet and at what time. That would be my uh, tip. So with the perfect table secured and dress code worries put aside, I was all set to embark on a culinary journey. Throughout my journey on the Explorer of the Seas, I was treated to a variety of menus from the taste of the Caribbean to the taste of Italy and the farewell Bon Voyage meal. The cuisine was diverse and delightful. There we go. It's Caribbean night. 
So here's the recommendations, onion tart, tiger shrimp, and cream brulee, we like that. That's what we got tonight. Escargo salad, Dahlia onion tart, strawberry shortcake with no sugar, and pie. One interesting change I did notice was the classic dishes. They used to be available on all the menus in addition to the nightly food offerings, but they were not presented as before. But don't worry, I believe the dining room is, is quite accommodating and if you want something extra, you just need to ask for it. Or if you have a specific request, you can simply order it 24 hours in advance with your server. an array of culinary delights from all over the world and it was served by an excellent team of waitstaff. Remember every setback can turn into an opportunity and every dining experience can be as unique and enjoyable as you make it. So let's delve into the delicious offerings of the Explorer of the Seas. Different things. Oh, it's French night. So we have calamari and chicken cordon bleu. Escargot wedge salad. <laughs> Some type of beef dish. But this salmon is my favorite. I think this is my eighth night of salmon. Beef tenderloin. And we have salmon one more time. This is apple cobbler with vanilla ice cream. Cream puffs. Some type of vegan ice cream with berries. Today we have a taste of Asia. This is the menu. Hot and sour soup. This is chicken and cabbage dumpling. Kung Pao chicken. Pad Thai with chicken. Tapioca. Some kind of matcha cake. This was a nice city. It's very popular. It seems to be a lot of people here. Malay of Seoul. This is chicken parmesan. Lemon tart. It's lemon curd tart. Mine is a Caesar salad. Maybe 
scallops. Seed scallops. Beef tenderloin. And salmon. Banana, cocoa. Test custard, yes. This is a red velvet cheesecake ricotta. Dinner tonight, we are over at this place. Some type of salad. It's a Vidalia onion tart. And mine is a, a uh, avocado melon salad. It's a shrimp dish that is Indian. A little spicy. Lobster. This particular meal is some type of spicy shrimp. It's an Indian dish. And my husband really liked it, so he got a second helping. Chocolate banana custard tart. And just bring all of the chefs. Chefs, be ready. That well, looks pretty. So here's the dining room from a different perspective. We are at a table for two over in this section today. Yeah, looks nice. And the rest of the, so this is some more of the dining room. Seafood cake. I probably have lamb stew. Pecan crusted salmon. So I found the flexibility and variety of the main dining room on the Explorer of the Seas did contribute to a, a fulfilling dining experience that complemented the diverse itinerary of the ship. Indian spicy shrimp, lobster, it looks delicious. Baked <laughs> Alaska, chocolate. This is a, like, almost like a pot pie. They call it chicken, vegetable, mushroom, chocolate mousse. So if you found this video helpful or entertaining, I would appreciate it if you'd give it a thumbs up. And if you are interested in all things cruising, please consider subscribing to my channel for more videos like this. You might also want to check out my playlist where I've gathered all my Explorer of the Seas experiences. And stay tuned for my upcoming series on solo travel with Princess Cruises where I'll be diving into the dining options there as well and what their main dining room is like. You can check that out here. Thank you so much for watching. I'm grateful for your support and I can't wait to bring you along more cruising adventures. Until next time.